Unfortunately, in the name of the BLT, here are some of the crimes that have been committed. Let's start with the toast, shall we? Toast like a board and burnt. Now this one, of course, is a no-brainer. This one we're going to send back immediately. Um, but this one is just a little bit more subtle. Looks like it's okay, but... Just want to show you how crumbly this is. I mean, this is dust. This is branded dust. It's not toast. And that's real. I really hate those hard edges on a BLT. We'll talk more about that later. Bacon's another problem. Very often, when I get it in a diner, it's all burnt like this, burnt to a crisp, beyond recognition. Can't even check its dental records. I mean, that's, uh, that's a problem. Uh, or you can get it where it's sort of creepily undercooked and you're wondering whether it's safe to eat. And it can be, it can be greasy like this as well. Um, so I hate looking at that. Then, of course, nobody ever pays attention to the lettuce. To begin with, they use the least interesting iceberg lettuce. They usually use the least in interesting parts of it. You know, I don't mind iceberg lettuce in certain contexts. Uh, the crispy heart of the iceberg lettuce is very nice. Um, but they use that outer part with that white rib in it, and it's, uh, it's all browning. I mean, it looks like lettuce that's been recycled. Um, I don't want this on my BLT. It's terrible. And then there's the tomato situation. People are making BLTs all year round, of course, and when they make them in the middle of winter, and sometimes even in summer, they use these anemic tomatoes that vie with the lettuce for the Paller Award. Um, look at this tomato right here. This is, you know, you can see the, the cottony texture and the white. Why bother? Why make a BLT if you can't get good tea? So let's skip those as well. Then there's the question of the mayonnaise. Now, you know, when you look into the kitchen at a diner, very often you look at this little container on the line there that looks like this, sort of like vanilla pudding. <laughs> mayonnaise actually gets dangerous uh, when it uh, stays out for a while, and you don't want to eat that. If, if I were to eat this, I think I would have to pay a visit to the Mayo Clinic, in fact. So be careful about that. Now, we're all, also... Uh, sometimes people don't use mayo at all. They use like mayo substitutes. Now these mayo substitutes are okay for some things, but not on a BLT. We're talking, you need really good mainstream mayonnaise for a BLT. We're not talking complicated here. I mean, how complicated can three initials be? In this sandwich, remember, we have five easy pieces. You got your bread, you got your mayo, you got your bacon, you got your lettuce, you got your tomato. There's no fancy gadgets needed, no gimmicks, no gizmos. To make it, you don't need to be double-jointed or to have unique dexterity. This ought to be simple enough, but it always seems to go awry. And I'm not going to take it anymore, so come back and I will show you how to apply some TLC to your BLT. you know, other people like myself have noticed um, how bad the state of the art has become, the BLT making. They have despaired, as I have, and they've been looking for alternatives to the BLT. Uh, they've tried to reinvent it. They have tried to alter the very DNA of the BLT. Now, I was in um, Nantucket, Massachusetts a couple of summers ago, and I saw a great sandwich, which actually is a good BLT alternative. I call it the TLT. Trout lettuce and tomato, smoked trout that is, which has an almost bacony kind of taste. It's a very good idea. Now, first of all, uh, you start with really good white bread. You know, forget the stuff that you buy in the supermarket in the twist tie plastic bag. Go to a good bakery and get really good white bread. And I've got some here that's nicely toasted. It's not firm, it's nice and soft. Um, you spread this with mayonnaise. And, you know, for this TLT, you can, if you want, use a tartar sauce because that's a nice thing with fish, but I like to keep that sort of BLT kind of flavor. So I spread that with a little bit of mayo. I do that on the other side as well. And then, this is very simple. I mean, this just really follows the guidelines of the, uh, of the BLT. I've got some uh, Boston lettuce here. Put this on. This, of course, is from Nantucket, so we certainly would use Boston lettuce. We'll put it on both sides, in fact. And what we're going to do is put some tomato on this sandwich. And we're going to put on some smoked trout. And I'm going to break this in half just to get it fitting on the sandwich nicely. And there you go. The TLT. Try it. I think it's a really good sandwich. Now, I've seen a couple of other things happening lately. I have seen some of our new American chefs 
um, making a, a BLT salad. It's a crazy sounding idea, but actually it works out very nicely. Uh, you'd need a firmer lettuce for this, like a romaine lettuce. Cut it into a few uh, pieces like this. I don't mean cut it, I mean tear it, because it's always much better when you tear lettuce. All right. And then what I want you to do is add some crisp bacon to it. And I've got some sort of lardon of bacon here that have been sauteed. And then, and you know, you can cut it just a little bit thicker than you normally do. This is like having, this is sort of like having a French, you know, frise salad that has little pieces of lardon, little pieces of bacon in it. Um, you want tomatoes in this as well, of course. And you can put in wonderful uh, little yellow tomatoes like these. I'm picking out the littlest ones I can find. Or I've got some larger uh, cherry tomatoes here, which I've cut in half because they're a little bit too big. And you put a few of those in another possibility. Now, you can, you can go crazy. You can put in some things that are normally not in a BLT, like um, some fresh herbs. I've got a little bit of tarragon here. I've got a little bit of uh, chive. And uh, to, um, to keep the mayonnaise theme, you can make a dressing for the salad that has a good deal of mayonnaise in it. So we're going to make a mayonnaise-based dressing. Put a little bit of that, a little mayo. We're going to mix it together with a little bit of Dijon mustard. And to this, to thin it out a little bit, I'm going to use some white wine vinegar. I don't want it too thin, but I don't want it too thick, but I definitely want it to look like mayonnaise because that's part of the conceit of this. I mean, you know what this is? This is a deconstructed BLT. This is a blown apart BLT, blown apart into a salad. If you want, you could use a little bit of finely chopped garlic. I just put a drop in. And if you want, you could use a little bit of good olive oil just to give it a little more body and a hint of an interesting extra flavor. There we go. And now you can dress the salad with this. And I've left out one thing. Remember, it's bacon, lettuce, and tomato on toast. So what I've got here is some croutons. And this is the toast part. And this really is a great, um, you know, I mean, it's like, the, it's like the sandwich blown apart. You could also, if you wanted, Use some uh, like white toast cut into little squares so you really can see the white toast part of it. But I think it tastes a lot better like this. Toss this together. It's really a great salad. Voila. Okay, we're going to put a little bit more of this um, tarragon on top. Ah, you know, it's really terrific. It's a good idea. Should be a classic itself. However, let's get to the real classic, shall we? I'm going to make the best BLT that you ever saw. Now, first of all, it starts with really good bacon. Uh, you know, the stuff that's in the supermarket, that's pretty good. And I've been eating BLTs made from that stuff for years. But it's got more distinction when you buy a piece of terrific slab bacon. Lightly smoky, not too smoky. And you cut it yourself. And I'm going to recommend four slices on a standard size BLT sandwich. So you want to make four um, slightly thicker slices of bacon. Gives it a little bit more character. There's one. I've got a couple of others cut. And you know, you just cook this the normal way. You cook it in a pan. Like that. There's a few more slices. A couple of minutes per side. I like to cook it not too high because that shrivels it up immediately. But not too low because then it gets kind of limp and greasy. Alright, I've got some here that are already done. You have to watch this stuff carefully because with the, uh, with the slab bacon, some parts are probably going to be a little bit thicker and meatier than others. And so you've got to sort of move it around in the heat so that it doesn't, um, you know, get too crisp in some parts and too fatty and uncooked in others. All right, now, we're looking at a few other ingredients here. We're looking at um, the toast. Now, this probably is the most important trick of all. When you eat a BLT, tell the truth, isn't it the case that the crunch of the bacon kind of gets hidden by the crunch of the toast. When you, when you toast white bread, no matter how lightly you've toasted it, those two crunches are competing. I want more of the bacon crunch to be evident, not the toast crunch. Sounds ridiculous, but it's an important point. You know, sometimes you bite into that crunchy toast and you almost like, you know, hurt your mouth, hurt the roof of your mouth on that crunchy toast. On the other hand, if you did it just on white bread that wasn't toasted, it wouldn't seem right because that toasted flavor is really an important part of the equation. So here's what you do. You start with really great white bread from a really good bakery, like this one is. This was baked today. 
cut four slices, and I like them pretty much on the thick side to make this a real substantial BLT. Put them on a little pan like this, and then slip it under the broiler. Forget about the toaster. Slip it under the broiler just for a moment or so until they're lightly toasted on one side only. Now, this is really the key. Now, look. Look at the other side of this. See? The other side of this is untoasted. Perfect. It's a little crunchy on the outside. It's soft on the inside. This makes the ideal BLT. Now, what I want you to do is uh, coat this with a little bit of mayonnaise. Just wipe this off. Oh, we use this. And here's, here's my ideal architecture. I like mayonnaise on both sides of the bread. And um, I'm not worried about mayonnaise. It doesn't scare me. I think if this sandwich doesn't have a good dose of mayonnaise, it doesn't taste right. It tastes a little dry. Mayonnaise on both sides of the bread. Okay, now we go on to the lettuce. And for this, I think the very best lettuce to use is what they call the green leaf lettuce. And I like to use a lot of it. And also the lettuce is used, you know, what the lettuce is doing essentially is protecting the bread so it's not going to get soggy from, it, from the tomatoes and the other things in the sandwich. Oh man, that's real. I love to see those big frilly leaves poking out of the sandwich. There we go. I'm going to use a lot of it. <clears throat> okay. Now, what you want to do next is the bacon. And I'm going to put two pieces of bacon on this side and two pieces of bacon in the other direction on this side. And it's going to be a nice cross work when I get inside there. Okay, now we're up to the tomatoes. And for this, I want you, there's no doubt that you've got to use the very best tomatoes that you can find. And if you can't find them in the middle of January, then don't make the sandwich. But these days, there's some very good tomatoes in the market, even in the middle of January, that they're growing in hot houses. I've got some beautiful, red, ripe, juicy tomatoes here. I don't really care about the size of the tomato, um, just as long as it's a fantastic tomato, red, ripe, and juicy. Uh, you might want to salt the tomato slightly. The bacon is salty, I know, but this brings out a little extra flavor in the tomatoes. And you might want to use a little bit of pepper on the sandwich. All right, let's do the flip. See, the tomatoes are right in the middle, and so they, won't, they don't threaten to make, the, uh, to make the bread soggy. And now I'm going to take a knife. Let's see, I'll take this bread knife, and I'm going to cut through. I think I'll cut it this way. Come on, balance. There we go. Okay. Tell me that isn't the best looking BLT that you've ever seen. Oh, I love it. Come back in a moment and I'm gonna eat it. Here I am at my reserve table at the diner. Um, now we've got a few weighty issues before us. First of all, you know, the, um, I'm not going to kid you, the BLT is a calorie bomb. It really has got calories coming from every direction in this sandwich and saturated fat. Um, all the more reason to eat only a great one if you're going to eat a BLT. I mean, why, you know, down about 1,500 calories and have a lousy sandwich? So I say, don't make the BLT an everyday event. Only save it for when you have the perfect situation, the perfect ingredients. The perfect tomatoes are really, really important. Without it, it's just not the same. The taste, that ripe, you know, late summer taste of tomatoes against the bacon is the engine, you know, that drives this sandwich. Um, another question. When I built my sandwich before, in my ideal architecture, I was looking mostly at texture questions like, uh, putting the lettuce on the outside protects the bread from getting soggy. Putting the tomato in the middle prevents the bread from getting soggy. But there is another school of thought about this. Uh, there are people who love the taste of the mayonnaise against the bacon and love the taste of the mayonnaise particularly against the tomato. So that's something else that you might want to think about as you build your platonic form of BLT sandwich. 
Uh, but this is mine. I'm going to stick with this. I really, I think this is just perfection the way that it is. I love it. Um, and I can't wait. I'm salivating. I can't wait to, um, to sink into it. Um, let's talk for a moment about what you're going to drink with this. There's no doubt in my mind. I wouldn't, I'd feel really silly drinking a glass of wine with this sandwich. Though wine goes with many things. And I could think of a sort of crisp, dry German Riesling perhaps would be nice with this. But no, I have to go with the beverage of my boyhood. This. I don't know, just something about an old-fashioned Coke. None of your new Coke, please. Something about an old-fashioned Coke served in the right bottle with the right glass that, um, well, let's face it, it's the real thing with this sandwich. Now, the thing is, there are people who would fill this glass up with ice. I don't want to know from those people. Uh, I want a cold bottle of Coke, and I want to pour it into the glass. Because when you put ice in, you know, you dilute the soda, you cut the texture. I think it's just great the way it is. You can, if you want, be really radical and put a little slice of lemon in there or a little slice of lime. Or if you want to be really old fashioned, you know what they used to do in the delis, they, I mean, in the, at the lunch counters, they would have um, syrups that they would squirt into it. You could squirt cherry syrup in and then it would be a cherry Coke or a lime syrup it would be a lime Coke. And if you haven't tried that, if that sounds positively disgusting to you, try it. It's really good. And it goes nicely with the sandwich too. Now, I'm going to take a little time and show you the abandon with which I eat this sandwich. Because there's nothing um, genteel about eating a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. <laughs> you know, to eat this properly, it's got to be dribbling down your chin. Excuse me. Oh, man. That is so good. I'm tempted to say, you can keep your foie gras, you can keep your truffles. This is really, excuse me, I'm going in for more. Mm. Why doesn't this get more attention? Why is everybody afraid to tell the truth <laughs> that this is one of the greatest dishes ever invented in America. You know what you can do, by the way, if you're not into the classic and um, if you think it's just a little bit too downscale for your culinary taste, um, you can make all kinds of interesting conversions into other cultures with this kind of sandwich, with the basic ingredients. You could, for example, take uh, focaccia or bruschetta and put pancetta, Italian bacon on it, and great Italian plum tomatoes. And uh, let's put some Italian lettuce on there, radicchio or something like that. I mean, you can play all kinds of games with this, but nothing's going to be as good as the basic BLT. Oh, so great with a Coke. Well, that's the deal. I hope that I have proved to you, once again, that you don't need the most high-end ingredients or the fanciest cooking techniques to really have a good taste and to have good taste in your life. So remember, for me, as always, life is a matter of taste. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. like a copy of the recipes you've just seen, please send us $4 for postage and handling to the address on your screen. You can also get the recipes for free when you visit our website at foodtv.com or AOL keyword food.